I invite you to go ahead and take a seat. Hey, I'm really excited uh, about uh, the reality that we care about families here at Calvary. I mean, we want every single family uh, that's a part of Calvary. In fact, we want every single family in our community uh, to thrive and be healthy and be whole. And, uh, and so uh, we're doing something that is totally different, totally new. We're going to be launching this fall a marriage mentoring uh, ministry. We're going to be offering couples that are uh, struggling, couples that that are you know, maybe even good but want to get better, uh, just an, an opportunity to sit down with somebody who's a little bit further along the journey to offer encouragement and uh, really that's just what it is, encouragement, prayer, uh, that kind of thing. And, and I'm sharing this with you because uh, I want you to be praying for that, but I'm also sharing it with you because this coming Saturday we're offering some training for those who would like to be marriage mentors. Uh, and I'm mentioning this uh, because we haven't, you know, been broadcasting it uh, really until today because we've, we've had a number of people who said, hey, we want to be a part of that. And uh, they've gone through the training. They're the trainers now. And so this coming Saturday, uh, we're offering that from, uh, uh, I want to say 8 o'clock in the morning, but I mean, like, actually check me out, 8 to 4. It's an all-day thing. And, uh, and if you are interested in being part of that, again, this is for marriage mentors. Your marriage is in a healthy place. You would love to encourage other couples uh, along the way. Then uh, if you want more information about that, you want to even just have your name on a list to keep you informed, then uh, go to marriage at calvary, uh, calvarylhd.com. Marriage at calvarylhd.com. And you can uh, ask questions. You can uh, tell them you want to be there. You can get in touch. Say, hey, I can't do it now, but I'd like to do it in the future. Uh, so I'm just mentioning that because I'm excited about the possibility that we could impact relationships and marriages in the church and ultimately in the entire community of Lake Havasu City. Wouldn't you love to see us start a ministry that, that actually brought the divorce rate of our community down? So uh, that's what we're doing, and I wanted you to know about that. That's This coming Saturday from 8 to 4 is the training, and if you're interested, that's marriage at calvarylhd.com. Just email them, and they will get back to you and let you know about the, the details or answer any other questions you might have. Hey, grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 is our text this evening. And, uh, and if you don't have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your device, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. And turn to page 965, and you will find Matthew chapter 7. You'll find our text, and you'll be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you're here and you don't have a Bible, and you want one, then please take one of these. It is our gift to you. We want you to have the Word of God, read the Word of God, because we know if you do that, then God will change your life. Uh, I read a, a Gallup poll recently of Protestant churchgoers, people who are regular in attendance, uh, and uh, it said that 32% read the Bible daily. 32%. So we're, we're you know, a Protestant church, uh, and uh, most of you are regular goers, and that means that one-third of you read your Bible every day. Uh, now, another 27% read it, you know, maybe a couple times a week. Uh, and so, you know, it's about half of us, maybe a little more, that are, that are regular in the Word. And we'll tell you all the time, if you read God's Word, God will change your life. That's why we give the Bibles away. That's why we encourage you to read it. That's why this year we challenged Calvary to read through the New Testament. It's one chapter a day, and you know, if you started in January, you'd finish in September. It's not that, you know, so you got a lot, of, a lot of options to, you know, flake out during vacation or whatever. But, uh, but we want you to read God's Word because we want you to, to encounter the living God. And that's a value that, that is really important to us and hopefully really important to you. Uh, but when I encourage people to uh, read the Bible, and I've been doing it for as long as I've been in ministry, uh, the common complaint is this. I read the Bible and I don't understand it. Anyone, any of you ever said that? Anybody want to commit? Yeah. A lot of us have. And, and I get that because there's a lot of stuff in there that's weird. Okay? There's a lot of stuff in there that needs historical context. There's a lot of that stuff that needs some, some you know, history that, that is part of it. There's just some, some stuff that, you know, go, hey, what, what about this? I don't understand this. Uh, it needs, you know, even the laws of the day that it's written in. But if you've ever said, I don't understand the Bible, the message today is for you. 
Okay, the message today is for you. I mean, because Jesus is so clear, so direct, so simple that every single one of us can understand it. I mean, he's just, it's about as simple a statement as he can make. And so we're going to, now, I got to tell you, living it isn't nearly as easy as hearing it. But we'll get to that. Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at just three verses, verses 12 through 14. This is what Jesus says as he's getting toward the end of the Sermon on the Mount. We've been in the Sermon on the Mount for months now. Uh, we're talking about taking the words of Jesus and applying them to our lives. And if we do that, it'll turn our lives upside down. So Jesus says, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. One rule, two roads. That's what Jesus shares. One rule, two roads. All of us are faced with this. All of us just read it and you all understood it. But first of all, let's look together at the one rule, which is often called the golden rule, right? The golden rule. We grew up hearing that, right? I grew up with good old King James. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Everybody else got that one too? See, you knew scripture. You had it memorized. You just didn't know where it was. Now you know where it is. Matthew 7, 12. Jesus says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Now, he says all the Old Testament, uh, you know, laws and commands and teachings about relationships are summarized in this one statement. Do to others as you would have them do to you. As you wish they would treat you, treat them. Uh, the New uh, Living Translation says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. Now, that's about as simple as it gets, isn't it? I mean, most of us in here are going right now, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've heard this. My mom used to tell me this all the time. I pretty much ignored it my whole life. Why are you talking about it now? And, and this is just really simple. Really simple. Jesus says, if you want people to be kind to you, what should you be? Yeah, kind. And if you want people to forgive you, what should you do? Yeah, forgive them. So if you want people to be honest with you, how should you be? Yeah, tell the truth, huh? <laughs> It's amazing how this is so simple and yet so difficult. If you want people to be helpful towards you, how should you be? Yeah, help people. How about this? If, if you want people to be polite to you, yeah, be polite, right? Golly, this is, this, this is earth shattering, isn't it? <laughs> if you want people to encourage you, what should you do? Yeah. See, and people go, you know, I don't understand the Bible. Well, I think we can understand this. I think every one of us can understand this. This is so simple, but it's so revolutionary. Can you imagine a world where people actually did this? Because Jesus can. He imagines a world where his people do this. In fact, Jesus challenges us to determine the tone of all our relationships through this one rule. He... he he wants his followers to lead. He wants his followers to go first. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, let's be really clear about what that is. Since we're being simple tonight, that means you believe that Jesus actually is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world. And you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead. And you have made a personal commitment to follow Jesus with your life. If that's you, if that describes you, then your Lord wants you to initiate this attitude, this way of living. What he's saying is, hey, I want you to actually do to others as you would have them do to you. I want you to treat other people the way you want to be treated. It's revolutionary. Because most of us live our lives exactly the opposite so much of the tension in our relationships, in our families, in our marriages, and, and at work exists because instead of initiating this one rule, we respond to other people's actions. We respond to other people's attitudes. We respond to other people's words. And in our response, if they're angry towards us, how do we tend to respond? Yeah, we tend to get angry back. 
they gossip about us. What do we do? Yeah, we <laughs> see now we don't want to confess, do we? <laughs> Look, we know what we do. We've all been at the family reunions, <laughs> right? Somebody starts talking smack. Well, they said this, and and next thing you know, we're just all just chewing on each other. And and, and see, this is the pattern we have to break. This is what Jesus is confronting because he wants us to lead. He wants to turn the relational rules upside down. And he's looking at us and he's saying, hey, what I want you to do is determine your attitude based on his rule, not their behavior. That's as blunt as it gets. He actually wants us to treat others as we want them to treat us, not as they treat us. Not as they are treating us, but instead he says, hey, what I want you to do is treat them like you want to be treated. This is what love looks like. And we know how Jesus feels about that. And this is radical. This is crazy. This is extremely difficult. It's simple to understand. It, it is life-changing to apply to your life. Okay, just, just think for a moment how this one rule would impact your marriage. Okay, if you're in a relationship, there's that wonderful person that drives you crazy, in good ways and bad, sitting next to you right now. Or isn't here, and you're going to tell them all about it when you get home. Uh, then Jesus wants you to initiate serving in that relationship. He wants you to initiate loving in that relationship, forgiving in that relationship. He wants you to be the one who is patient and kind first. You know how many marriages just are absolutely distraught because what happens is one person looks at the other and says, well, I will if you will. And the other person says, well, I will if you will. Right? The other one wants, both of them want the other to go first. I, I know this because I've counseled a lot of couples and they're both waiting on the other one to go first. And what Jesus says is both of you go first. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you take the initiative, you lead, you be the one who's patient, you be the one who's kind, you be the one who's loving, you be the one who's forgiving, you be that person and let me handle the rest. Refuse to react or respond to poor behavior or negative attitudes. Instead, live the rule. Live it out. So do you actually want a better marriage relationship? Not rhetorical. Do you actually want a better marriage relationship? Then live the one rule. Both of you that answered. You guys are all sitting there going, if I say yes, does that mean my marriage is terrible? No. Like, I want a better marriage relationship. Do you want a happy family? Yeah, then live the one rule. If you've got kids at home, live the one rule. Can I, can I just point something out that is just so stinking obvious, but we miss it? <laughs> hey, parents, guess who your kids are learning from? So you can blame it on the internet. You can blame it on their friends at school. You can blame it on, they're learning primarily from you. So every little boy is learning how to treat his mom by listening to his dad talk to and about his mom. You want your son to respect his mother? Then speak words of kindness and respect. He'll do the same. Your daughters are learning how, how to respond, how to treat their, their, you know, their dads by listening to their mom talk to and about her father. So if you want her to respect her dad, which means that she would actually respect and, and have healthy relationships with men, then, then she needs to hear the encouragement and the kindness and the forgiveness. See, honestly, uh, and you've all been there with the same place as I have, you know, when you hear a five-year-old drop the F-bomb, it does not mean that that's a bad kid. It means that somebody needs to smack his parents. Let's just be honest about this. Our kids are learning from us. 
When Jesus gives us one rule, it's not rhetorical. It's not like some perfect, you know, world that, that one day we'll live in. He's talking about our lives right now that we can make a difference. We can change our families. That whole dynamic can happen if we get serious about what Jesus said. I mean, we sing beautiful songs of praise about how awesome God is. Why don't we take the simple statement that Jesus makes and let's actually live by it and let our lives be different? And no, it's not going to be easy, but it is totally worth it. If you want contentment in your work, live the one rule. You go, but pastor, you don't know the people I work with. You don't know how negative they are and how terrible they are and everything like that. Okay, then live the one rule and one of two things is going to happen. Either you will work in silence because <laughs> they don't want to talk to you anymore and things will get better then for you. Or you know what will happen? God will use you to change lives for all eternity because you will change the attitude of your workplace. You go, that can't happen. Yes, it can. But for that to happen, you actually have to believe Jesus enough to do what Jesus says. And then things will be different because you're different and because you're living different with a different attitude and you're loving people even when they're mean and nasty and you're speaking kindness even when they're mean. And it's giving God an opportunity to work through your life because you're living the one rule. You see, we live this one rule and Jesus will turn our world upside down. And, and let's get... Specific, if we, as Calvary, live this one rule, it'll turn our community upside down. It'll have a, an impact across Lake Havasu City that will shock you if we'll do it. If we'll do it. Can you imagine? What if we all suddenly treated other drivers with the one rule? And by that, I don't mean giving them a one-way sign with the middle finger. <laughs> I'm talking about we actually lived it. I'm a road rage. Let's have road peace. Why? Because we're not angry. We're not yelling. We're just, we're, we're treating others the way we want to be treated. Hey, wait, how about this? How about living the one rule at your kids' sporting events? Towards the umpires and the coaches? How about that? Would that make a difference? Yeah, I think it would. What about living that one rule with every wait person that takes care of you in every restaurant in the city? What about living it out? Because if you do that, it, it allows, by the way, they all know who we are anyway. Half the time you're wearing Calvary shirts anyway. If you're wearing a Calvary shirt, you darn well better treat them nice and tip well. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, they know where we're coming from, especially on, you know, Sundays, I mean, maybe even on Saturdays around here, they know, you know, we're coming from, they, they know where we're from. So what if we, what if we're living differently? What if we're treating people differently? We're going, hey, if I was in their place, and a lot of us have been in their place, how do I want people to treat me? Let's treat them that way and, and see the revolution start to happen as we transform the community. And, and even in those situations where you think that you can get away with it, I don't have to live the one rule at this point. I'm out of town. I don't have to do it at this point because nobody's going to see me. What if you just do it anyway? So I knew I was preaching this message this week. And, and yet this week, uh, God reminded me how important this one rule is. Because I don't know if anybody else is like me, but um, my, you know, TV provider is having a dispute with CBS. And that does not make me happy because there's a lot of golf on CBS, <laughs> and it's the playoffs. And if you're not a golfer, you don't care. Um, the other thing is, it's like two weeks away from college football season, and there's a lot of college football on CBS. I am not happy. So I call the provider. I'm not happy, I'm frustrated. I call them up. Yeah, I've got this problem. I don't have CBS. So I went to, and, they, and, and the girl that's talking to me, she's like, well, okay, here's what we can do. We can do this and this. And I was like, okay, great. And at that point, and, and even though I wanted to be a jerk, I had been nice. And then she says, okay, we just got to confirm your address and your email. Well, my email is pastorchad at calvarylhc.com. <laughs> <clears throat> See where this is going? And at that moment, I was like, I'm glad I wasn't a jerk. 
But God wanted to teach me a whole lot more. Because then she goes, oh, you're a pastor. What is that like? <laughs> no, she did. I mean, I didn't ask anything. I, I, wasn't, I didn't call her up to witness to her anything. I just called her up because I want CBS. <laughs> and, and she goes, what's that like? And I go, it's awesome. I get to serve God. I get to teach people, uh, you know, about Jesus. I get to share, you know, hope with people who are hopeless, uh, you know. And she asked me some other questions. I said, well, do you go to church? And she goes, I'm not really religious. Neither am I. <laughs> not. Nah, it's really about a relationship with Jesus. And she goes, well, you know, I went to church a couple of times, but I didn't really commit. I'm like, are you serious, God? <laughs> you're, you're just like, you just set me up. Because this never happens to me. And I went, well, you know, Jesus will change your life if you'll commit 100% to him. I encourage you to try it again. Now, I don't know who she is, where she's going to be, but here's what I know. If we live the one rule, God shows up. God shows up. He'll show up in your marriage. He'll show up with your kids. He'll show up at work. He'll show up when you're playing. He'll show up because you're taking Jesus seriously and you're deciding that you're going to treat others actually the way that you would like them to treat you. And we can change our community if we do that. There's enough of us. We can make something great happen here. But more even than the community, it'll change your family. It'll change your marriage and your relationships if you'll trust Jesus with the one rule. So Jesus talks about the one rule, and then he talks about the two paths. Verses 13 and 14. He says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Again, Jesus is direct. He's clear. He makes it so simple. There is one path that is the easy road to destruction. There's one path that's the easy road to destruction. This is the popular road. Come on, we all know about it. Lots of people on it. Most of us have spent uh, significant time on this road. Hopefully, God has redeemed your life from this road. But here's the reality. Even if he has redeemed your life from this road and you're a follower of Jesus, um, that road still beckons to us. See, uh, one thing I do know is that sin nature is part of us until God completely redeems us, which means, by the way, that you die. And you get a new body, one that doesn't, you know, get old or sick or have pain or die. It's kind of a good deal. But until that day, that other path, well, it calls your name. Because that, that broad path is like a six-lane highway that is straight and flat. And, and all those lanes, uh, well, they're a little bit different, but they all lead the same place. And all of them lead to ruin. But some of them know your name and call your name. I mean, maybe you prefer the lane that's called success and popularity. You know, it's in, you're enamored with likes and followers and you're living for success that doesn't really satisfy anything at all. Or maybe your lane to destruction is all about money and stuff. You just want to accumulate more. You got to have a bigger and better always. Uh, you want a bigger nest egg. You want security of having lots. Or maybe your lane to destruction is just sexual pleasure. Okay, you're, you're looking for the perfect partner or a gratifying experience. Or maybe you're just addicted to pornography uh, and you're always pursuing physical intimacy but never finding emotional or relational intimacy. Or maybe your lane to destruction is indulgence. I mean, you just, it might be food, it might be drugs, it might be alcohol, it might be gambling. You just keep imagining that it's going to make you happy but the buzz wears off, you get hungry again, and you need more to mask the pain the next time. Or maybe your lane to destruction is fun. I mean, life is a party and you want to be in the middle of it. So you pursue fun, boating, travel, golf, shopping, sports, gaming. But what's left when the party is over? See, whatever lane calls your name, whatever, you know, lane you like to spend time in, you know, cheating a little bit, it's still going to crash 
in the end. It's going to ruin your life. It's going to destroy who you are. And, and here's the reality. There's a lot of us who uh, have chosen the narrow path, uh, but we change roads quite often. We go visit the path to destruction. You go, maybe it's for a season, or maybe it's for a day, or maybe it's for a few moments. But we go visit that path, and what happens is the more we go visit that path, the easier it is to get there and the longer we stay. And the next thing you know, your life is crashed and broken, and, and it's, it's in ruin because you've spent time on that path again. And you know what's crazy? is we know exactly where that path leads because we have Jesus telling us where it leads and we still travel that path. Now the good news is there's another option and that's the hard road to life. It is a hard road and Jesus tells us it's a hard road. I mean, that's, isn't that awesome? Jesus just goes, hey, the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. Look, he says, if you want to follow me, it's not easy. It's difficult. It's going to hurt. This is the road of following Jesus. He's not shy about the cost. He's not shy about the sacrifice because the road is difficult because Jesus asks us to submit to him. To submit to him as Lord. To give up our freedom, to give up our rights, to say, Jesus, you own me and I will follow you. I will do whatever you ask. It's the road of self-denial which we all love to deny ourselves. That, that was a joke. I don't think any of us like to deny ourselves. I mean, think about how much we complain just about eating less. That's like, you know, not denial. I mean, it is, but it, it shouldn't be. We don't want to deny ourselves, and yet Jesus says, hey, you know, you've got to reject your natural desires and you've got to lay them aside and you've got to surrender to me and, and refuse to live selfishly. Refuse to indulge. That's what he's calling us to. He's calling us to sacrifice, to be a servant, to put others first, to lay down our lives so that we can win. Jesus actually wants us to give up our hopes and our dreams and follow him into real abundant life. That's the hard path. It's not easy, but it is abundantly and eternally worth it. And here's the thing. You can really only live the one rule if you take the hard road. They're a match set. They go together. And if we want to be a church that impacts our community, then we have to be a people taking the narrow road and living the one rule. It is that simple. It is that revolutionary. But if we do that, then God will change our lives and he will transform our neighbors. Let me say that again. If we'll take the hard road and we will live the one rule, Jesus will change our lives and will transform our neighbors. And as a church, that's what we exist for, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people and the power of his truth. So it's simple. It's understandable. It's just not easy to do. So I want to close with two questions, and I pray that they haunt you. I mean, I really do. I hope they bother you, like, way beyond tonight. Which destination do you want? Life or destruction? Now, that's an easy answer to give, but it's the, the easy answer is not necessarily the, the one that you've, you're choosing. Which destination do you want do you really want life? Then it's only, the only way you're going to get there is Jesus. Or do you really want destruction? Because that's the easy path. So many of us are spending time on it in excess. So which one do you want? Be honest because it impacts you and your family. 
Second question is this, which road are you taking? Which road are you taking? Now, you might say, well, obviously we're taking the Jesus road. We're in church. Okay, for this moment right now, you're taking the Jesus road. But when we talk about which road are you taking, I'm not talking about this point in time moment, this one hour on Saturday evening. What I'm talking about is your life, the last 30 days. Your intentions for tomorrow. Which road are you spending more time on? Which road is really your road? And, and, and the church answer doesn't count. Because this is the answer that you and God know to be true. This is the answer that, you know, might shock your friends and family, might shock your preachers. You know, that we don't care. We, I mean, we do care, but, but if you lie to us, it doesn't, it doesn't really impact us. It impacts you. See, this is about you getting honest with God about how you're investing your life, which road you're taking. Because if you're, let me just put it this way. If the last 30 days there's stuff that you're keeping secrets about, you're probably on the road to destruction. If the last 30 days there's stuff that you'd be really embarrassed about being public knowledge, then you're on the road to destruction. If you're lying about things that you've been doing the last 30 days, you're probably on the road to destruction. Can, can we just be really clear about that? That this really isn't a, you know, a theological thing. This is a practical thing. This is about which way is your life heading. Because Jesus spells it out pretty clearly. And we can say, I believe in Jesus, I'm following Jesus, but are you on his road? Because if you need to change course, it begins with submission to Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Will you pray with me? Father, your word confronts us. The words of Jesus penetrate our hearts because we know the the times that we act selfishly, we do to others, not as we would have them do to us, but completely the opposite. We would never want to be treated the way that we treat others. And Father, you know the path that our feet are taking, no matter what our lips may say. You know our secrets. You know the things we're hiding. You know the, the things we don't want public to know about. But God, here's what we want. We want you in our lives. We want your grace and your mercy to flow right now, and we want you to change who we are and how we live. So that our families are redeemed, so that our friends and neighbors are redeemed, so that our community is redeemed by the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.